In today's video, we'll be looking at Dear Aline's pink tax video and asking ourselves, are women actually paying more in everyday life? We'll then enjoy a special pink tax related commercial courtesy of Burger King, because when I ask for a double cheeseburger with a side of social justice, I mean it. We'll also be taking another look at Dear Aline's channel as she teaches us about white privilege, a subject I keep bringing up because none of you are diverse enough and need training. Be sure to stick around because at the end of the video I'll be featuring a new piece entitled Terms You Should Be Learning where I help you make sense of modern jargon. Be sure to do all the youtube -y things YouTubers love you to do and click that red button. Snuggles! Gender is a universe. All white people benefit from racism. The health problems I have are more age-related than weight-related. You are a white privileged male. That's just a not so you, you have to give me a chance to respond we'll let you to that. Hate and we me don't are a high school, I would always buy these types of razors, the men's ones, instead of these types of razors, the women's ones, because these were cheaper. But I was always confused. I kept looking at the amount of razor blades. Hmm, there seems to be more razor blades in the women's version, but I'll just conveniently place my finger over the number. Mm-hmm. Lies. The material quality, even the size, trying to find a difference. But there wasn't one. So why did the exact same product cost more money? Because it was pink instead of blue. Fast forward to now. It turns out that this is a real thing. It's called delusion. <laughs> the pink tax. And it's what 50% of the population pays every time they shop without even knowing it. Companies put higher price tags on products marketed to women simply because we are women. And while the amount seems small at first, 8% here, 13% there, it really adds up to more than $1,300 a year. That's the price of a brand new MacBook, a week in the Caribbean, or even a small used car. Well, in an article published by Reason entitled The Pink Tax is a Myth, Elizabeth Nolan Brown writes that, of course, individual consumers do have control over which products they buy, though. And while the pink razors with the butterflies on the packaging may be marketed towards women, no one's forcing us to buy those over basic blue Bix. If the products in this study really were identical, save us some totally non-desired factors, it seems likely that women, or at least a larger proportion of women, would simply choose the products marketed towards men. Since they don't, one can jump to one of two conclusions. Either women are so brainwashed by marketing that they choose products against their own best interests because of it, or women find some discernible appeal in the women's products, be that different ingredients, cosmetic factors, or whatever else, that make them worth paying more for. I'm going to go with the explanation that grants women a little intelligence and agency. Alas, this sillier, yet more regulation-friendly narrative has also been embraced by government officials because if manufacturers can use gender to turn a profit, why can't the government use feminism for its own aims and gains? Women should not have to pay more than men for our everyday items, DCA Commissioner Julie Menon told broadly. Combating gender pricing is a key issue in the fight against inequality in our country. And this is not my imagination. It's a big enough deal that even Obama, yes, this Obama, as opposed to this Obama, was that racist? I don't want to be racist. Talked about dry cleaning gender discrepancies. I don't know why it costs more for Michelle's blouse than my shirt. <laughs> and this isn't happening only in the US. It's happening all over the world. In Britain, women pay up to 100% more than men for identical products. And it was even debated in Parliament. In the US, girls' clothing costs 4% more than boys. Girls' toys cost 7% more than boys. And women's personal care products cost 13% more than men's. And tampons, a necessity, right? Wrong. Pads and tampons are taxed as luxury items with taxes from three to seven and a half percent, which over a lifetime is a high price to pay for simply being a woman. Still sound like no big deal? What about this? In California alone, this tax adds up to an extra 20 million of taxes a year. 20 million. 
It's not nice. Well, Foundation for Economic Education writes that a second kind of explanation might rely on subjective differences. After all, economic value is always, in the end, subjective. Things are valuable to us because we believe, for whatever reason, that they will contribute to the satisfaction of our various ends. So perhaps women are willing to pay more for a particular cosmetic product because they have a strong preference for how it smells or some other feature of the good that does not matter as much to men. Subjective value might apply to personal services too. If getting that haircut just right matters more to women than to men, women will be willing to pay more for it. Hairdressers will be willing to spend more time on women's haircuts, and women will be more attached to particular service providers than men are. Women's haircuts may also take longer in general and be more involved. So is this really a pink tax or a blue discount? And is it really that firms are somehow punishing women, or is it that women's preferences are such that they are willing to pay more to get exactly the product they want? But what about medicine? Surely painkillers are equally priced? If anything, the ones for women should be cheaper. I mean, we're literally smaller than men. But no. A study showed that some painkillers for periods cost 50 cents more no, than just normal painkillers, even though they have the exact same ingredients in the exact same amounts. She says, as she proceeds to show us two boxes where the box on the left clearly has two additional ingredients. Lies. And then there's deodorant. I think you know what's coming by now. Our small hairless armpits cost us 30 cents more per stick of deodorant than men. And when the manufacturers were asked for an explanation why, they said They are completely different formulations. Even though the formulations were completely identical. It's getting so ridiculous that even international companies are outraged. Steve Madden, Urban Outfitters, and 200 other major companies sued the government because female products had higher import tariffs than male ones. It costs more to import a woman's shoe than to import a man's shoe. Apparently, it's not enough that women are already paid 20% less than men. So, what can we do? Tell your friends and family about the pink tax because awareness is the first step to change. And until these changes are made, make blue your new favorite color. Well, adamsmith.org writes that companies price their gender-targeted products differently because they can. They are taking advantage of the soft underbelly of exploitation. I wish someone would take advantage of my soft underbelly. The logic underpinning the campaign seems to involve services and products possessing a sort of objective value, a fair price. That companies discriminate between consumer groups in their pricing is evidence that they charge above this price and therefore exploit their customer base. However, to go a step further than this and use the information as ammunition in the ideological assault on free markets and to support a demand for government intervention is undoubtedly misled. If we do outlaw gender price discrimination, then in some cases we will rectify a wrong that could have been solved by easier access to market information. In other cases, we will end up either giving women an especially sweet deal or raising the price to such a level that very few men are willing to pay. Are you wondering what social justice tastes like? You may now have a basic understanding behind what the pink tax, this mythological behemoth, really is, but imagine if you could actually taste the pink tax. Imagine if, when you're out ordering a calorific treat, you are instead forced to swallow something else. Uh, that sounded wrong. I'm talking, of course, about feminist-inspired ideological issues. Shame on you and your dirty mind. Anyway, here's what Burger King had to say. What? They're 239 extra. Oh. Just because it comes in this cute new box. She's got eyelashes and a bow. I mean, not enough to pay for that. You're not. No. No. I'm not going to pay extra. I'm sorry. It's exactly the same thing. The same price. Why are you charging me more? I ordered the same thing he did. I'll literally take them out of the box today. Do you, do you not like pink? I don't I don't even want the price anymore. Would you pay extra for a pink box? Would you pay extra for a pink box? Don't have to get excited about it. Do I look excited? I don't get a about the fact that the box is pink. But when you go into the drugstore and you pay $2 more for your razor blades, do you say something then? No. We need to be able to tell people that I'm paying more, that we're paying more for the same product. And men and women should be paying the same price. For it's stupid. Truth.
Just a disclaimer, I hope you're ready for this one. After finishing the snippets I'm about to show you, I was tearing up and severely hormonal. But then again, the dramatic thumbnail and title did warn me. Get ready for some emotional cinematic music, accompanied by shocked faces, a sudden onset of realising you're white, and a good dollop of guilt tripping. Hi, my name is Aline and I have white privilege. You don't really. Your daddy is brown. Do you really? You shopped at thrift shops. You see, in the past, I never would have admitted that I have white privilege because I didn't truly understand what it meant. Let me take you on a little trip back in time. Growing up when people said, white people have privilege, I'd get mad. How can all white people be privileged? My parents could be drug addicts. That's reverse racism if I ever did hear it! Yes, I would actually say that. I want to share with you a personal story. I struggled for a long time with accepting that I have white privilege. And once I did, my whole family did not accept it. For years, I lost hope that they ever would. Can you imagine the family dinners? Thanksgiving? Christmas? Easter? The awkward silence as they know full well that at any moment Aline would stand up at the dinner table and scream about how none of her family members recognise their white privilege. Is that something that really weighed you down over the years, Aline? Did it make your heart ache? Was there a void you just couldn't fill? Is there a reason you have to speak so loud and act over-animated? Hmm. Then I logged into my Facebook yesterday and I saw this. Okay, I'm kind of retorted now. I don't know if it's going to work. When I used to hear the term white privilege, I used to feel like I was being accused of something. I was accused of being arrogant or I was accused of being racist. Now I understand it to mean it's just something I have. I have different experiences with the way the world treats me than many of my brothers and sisters of color. <laughs> Her brothers and sisters of color, ladies and gentlemen. She did not just say that. I'm shook. I'm shooketh. My mom talking about white privilege. After years and years of conversations we had, where she struggled with acknowledging that she had it, now she is encouraging other people to see it. It really gave me hope to see someone so stubborn like her, and I'm stubborn too, <laughs> finally admitting something so important. And I know if my mom can acknowledge that she has white privilege, then you can too. Terms you should be learning. Femina Morik. Femina Morik is a diamoric orientation that refers to non-binary people who are attractive exclusively to women. The term is necessary because most other ways to say that one is attracted to women involve the assumption of one's gender. For example, a straight person attracted to a woman is a man or man-aligned. A gay person attracted to women is a woman or woman-aligned. Some non-binary people are uncomfortable with this, so the term Femina Morik was created to state attraction to women unrelated to one's gender. The masculine counterpart to Femina Morik is Vira Morik, or Vera Morik, I don't know. And if you're wondering, yes, there is a flag. In fact, there are two. This one, and this one. It has a flower on it. Mwah. Well, if you enjoyed this video, then why not watch my previous video here? Or you can click here to access the complete playlist that will tickle your senses and arouse you for hours.